I'd follow the up. No, you want to listen to the main slam that we've been having down here. Robert Hart. Robert Hart. Robert Hart. Robert Hart.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Great in the sight of the Lord. Friends in Christ, we are all baptized by the one spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Our purpose is to commission these persons in the name of God and of this congregation to a special ministry to which they are called. I present to you these persons to be ambassadors for Christ on behalf of Grace Church Cathedral. They have been preparing to go on a mission trip to the Appalachian Mountains to grow in Christian community and serve the residents of Madison County, North Carolina. You have been called on behalf of your congregation to go out as witnesses to the risen Christ and to serve Christ in all persons and places. Through Christ and with Christ, you will share in a ministry of reconciliation and encouragement to build up the body of Christ and to care for all. Will you faithfully and reverently carry out this ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of this community and all whom you serve? Let us pray. Gracious God, your Son, before he ascended to glory, declared that your people would receive power from the Holy Spirit to bear witness to him to the ends of the earth. Be present with all who go forth in his name, protect them all the day long, and bring them safely home. In the name of God and of this congregation, I commission you as ambassadors and missionaries of Christ Church Cathedral. Let your light so shine before others they may see your good works and give glory to God. I commend you to this work and pledge you our prayers, encouragement, and support. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. God of truth and sacrifice, we give thanks for your servant, William. Alexander Gary, who, like the church's first martyr, gave witness to your liberating gospel and echoed Christ's healing words of forgiveness. May we also seek your truth as we offer ourselves in obedience to the same. All this we pray through him who is forever the bishop and reformer of our souls, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and to release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall be built up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The word of the Lord.
said, nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you of whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You all who are dressed in the, the bright blue, the aqua t-shirts who are heading out in just a little while, uh, you, all, you all exemplify this morning in a really powerful way. Bishop Gary's witness. Because you see, Bishop Gary saw the church as one. Yes, you are all individuals, as, as are all of you seated throughout the congregation and in the choir and in the sanctuary. We are all individuals created uniquely to do, to do our own work in the world, the work that God has given us to do, yet Yet, we know the value and the necessity of doing that work together. And all humanity is one, and that is what got, that belief is what ultimately got Bishop Gary killed. And you know what? It was worth it. Because he believed, and, and this was back in the 19, 19 this was about 1914, he wanted, he was very concerned about the African American members of the Diocese of South Carolina. And he believed that, that, he believed that they needed a bishop serving as assistant to him uh, to reach out and minister in that community. And, and there was a priest who wrote a 40 page diatribe, a, a 40 page racist rant to be more specific, in opposition to that plan. And then later, a little while later, there was a school up in Denmark, South Carolina, a little technical school at the time called Voorhees, and Bishop Gary wanted Voorhees to be brought in to the life and ministry of the diocese because he believed, and that this was an African-American technical school, and he believed that, that the African-American members of our wider community needed to have the opportunity for solid education. And so this same priest wrote vehemently in opposition to that plan as well. It would take years because that's what, that's what the seeds of, of hatred, sometimes it takes years for them to grow. And by the time, 14 or so years later in 1928, by this time, this priest was living down in the, on, along the coast of Georgia still canonically resident in Charleston, in, in South Carolina, still a priest of this diocese. And he was, had, was eaten up at that point with rage and hatred, so much so that he was, that his physical and emotional and his entire well-being, his entire body was suffering. He was very ill, is what I'm trying to say. And so he took a train 
up to Charleston, shot the bishop. The bishop lived for four days, five days, and then he died here. And before he died, he asked about the priest. He said, how is he doing? And then he said, I know God will forgive him because he didn't know what he was doing. And, and, the, and then the bishop died. And so I think about, we think about the images we've seen and the sounds, the cries that we've heard of the young, the young children um, along our very border. You see, those children are not strangers or aliens. And I, I, I mentioned that in my word from the vicar this morning about, about the Huguenots who came to this, this colony in the late 1600s. They were considered to be strangers and aliens. Yet, yet, they, they were welcomed here. And they, they formed a part and of the history of this state and played their own role. And Bishop Gary, of course, a descendant himself of those very Huguenots. The point being, all humanity is one, and the church is one. And that wonderful quotation that you, you have heard before that he says, if we are to be truly Catholic as Christ himself is Catholic, then we must have a church broad enough to embrace within its communion every living human soul, every living human soul. We are called upon to preach a social righteousness, a corporate salvation. It is not enough that the individual viewed apart from society should repent and be saved. We are saved as being part of a wider body. And what is that body? The church, the body of Christ. Gary also said that it is a person, not a dogma, that invites our faith. It is a person, not a code of ethics, that claims our love. It is not the doctrine nor the ethics of Christianity that have proved themselves so irresistibly attractive, but it is the life and character of Christ, the life and character of Christ, and that you all are exemplifying that in your visit and your, your heart, what is going to be your hard work, and I can't wait to see the pictures, the hard work that you're going to be doing every single day up in the mountains of North Carolina, because you know that you've been called. You have been called to this service, and we've just commissioned you to go out into the world, and each and every one of you, by virtue of your baptism, you who have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever, you too are called, and we are sent out. We are sent out to love and to serve. Bishop Gary also said that our, our high calling under God is to burn away the barriers which divide us, to allay prejudice, to strengthen the ties which bind brother to brother and section to section, and to make of this great land one free people. One free people. And of course, he's writing in the, the years after the Civil War when things were still pretty divided here, and the South was still strugg struggling to, to, st the South was still struggl struggling to, to learn what it meant to be part of a, of a union again, to be part of the whole. And we have the same example this week in our, own, in our own city, and you probably read about it, about this, uh, the apology that City Council made um, on, behalf of the, the, on behalf of Charleston for slavery. And I didn't follow much of the news, but the, the little bit that I saw, it appeared that it was a bit divided. There was some divided opinions about is this something that should be done or is it not? And I think that my point would simply be to raise the question, what is the truth in all this? What is the truth? If our arguments are simply that we didn't have anything to do with it, then we get stuck right there. Or do we go a little deeper? And do we strive for truth? Bishop Gary believed that the truth is worth struggling for and do we realize that if we 
a part of humanity and all humanity is one, then no, we don't, one doesn't need to beat oneself up or, get wa or wallow in guilt, but we do simply encounter the truth. And truth, truth is what brings about healing. Truth can bring healing to a world, to a nation, to a state, to a community, to a church. And so it is that same truth that Bishop Gary invites us to struggle for today. And we are grateful, all of us gathered here today are grateful for all of you in those Aqua T-shirts that you are representing us in your, in your own personal and, and corporate struggle to love and to serve as you seek the truth the truth of God's goodness and love, and as you carry forth that love into the world. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through the name of all things and men, for us and for our salvation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will now be away. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the gods. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Lifting our voices with all creation and all the saints of every time and place, let us offer our prayers to God, saying, In your mercy, hear us, Lord. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, remembering Skip, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and remembering the House of Deputies of the Episcopal Church and the Church of Nigeria in the Anglican Communion, that the Lord may confirm the church in faith, sustain it in hope, and deepen its communion in charity. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. For the leaders of all nations and peoples, that there may be mercy, justice, and peace throughout the world. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. For this city and every place, for ourselves, our families, and companions, and all those we love. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. For all those in every danger, those who are hungry and homeless, those who are beaten, oppressed, and imprisoned, that the example of the saints may give them courage and the help of believers give them hope. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. For all those who are ill or suffering hardship, especially Joe, Holly, John, Jennifer, Bill, Dixie, Madeline, Bratton, Jack, Steely, William, Dan, Tom, Laurie, Rebecca, Susan, Jean, Kyla, and Hay. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, 
For those serving at home or overseas in the military or in mission or outreach work and their families, remembering Eric, George, Alan, Keen, Andrew, Tim, and Bob. We pray for the success of our Glory Ridge mission and for the participants. For the dying and the dead and all who mourn, remember Bishop William Alexander Gary, Billy Hahn, Myrtle Edna Lasley, Robert Eugene Rupert, Marion Dwight, William and Mildred Anderson, Adolph and Imogene Brooks, and John Schaefer. In your mercy, hear us. Holy God, mighty God, immortal God, adored by martyrs and praised by the saints, receive the prayers of your holy church and grant them in accordance with your gracious will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also Children, come forward, please. I think we've got enough children right here in the front row. So if it's just the, the smaller children, the younger children, come forward, please. Wow, wow, wow. I see a lot of familiar faces from Vacation Bible School. I also see familiar faces from church. And we just, I just wanted to say how much fun we had this past week at Hero Central, our Vacation Bible School. We learned so much about heroes and about who God's heroes are. We also learned about some superheroes, particularly uh, Agent Shield. That was me. Do you recognize me? I had, a yellow, I had a yellow cape on, but now I have on a burgundy and uh, black cape. It's kind of like a cape, right? Do we have any favorite superheroes that we might want to tell me? You, who's your favorite superhero? Well, my favorite superhero is the Hulk and Batman. The Hulk and Batman, <laughs> yes. And Captain America? Oh, because you watched the Lego Batman movie, yes. Hulk and Iron Man, yes. Hulk? Wonder Woman, there we go. All right, so we, 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 love, we love superheroes, right? And we learned, about, we learned about a different type of hero this past week. Uh, and we, we learned that God has a favorite superhero. And that's each and every one of us. God sees us as superheroes and, and gives us the power to do all kinds of, of things. We had a little mantra, a little code we used all week. And we have a special hero to talk about today, Bishop Gary was a very special hero for God. And uh, in, in, our, in, our, uh, in our Vacation Bible School, we did what we do. God's heroes have heart. So I can remember it. God's heroes have courage. God's heroes have wisdom. 
God's heroes have strength. God, oh, God's heroes have hope, right? That's what yeah. I'm And God's heroes have power. So do good. Let's do it. Do good. Seek peace and go after it, right? Okay. Well, Bishop Gary, we said our first one, uh, God's heroes have heart. Bishop Gary had a huge heart. He had such a big heart that he believed and, uh, and, and talked about having, about God's heart being so big that it embraced every living being in the world. God's hero, uh, Bishop Curry had courage, right? Because Bishop Curry in his day did something very unpopular. And he said that God's love is for all and that all people are, belong in the church. He also had wisdom. Right? Because he wrote all kinds of, of essays and sermons that almost a hundred years later people are looking at and saying, wow, that was really wise. He was ahead of his time. Prophetic voice. God's heroes have hope. Bishop Gary had hope. He believed. He believed that the world could be a better place if the church would open its doors to all people. He believed that God was going to do that in God's time. And you know what the most powerful thing is? Is that Bishop Gary knew that God's heroes have power. And it's not from the muscles or the special boots or cape. It's from God. That God's heroes get their power from God. Just like in Pentecost when we had the lamp, the power comes from the source. Our Glory Ridge folks uh, have, a, have, a, have a, uh, a word on their back. It says apostello, and that means Greek for to send out, to commission. Uh, we have heroes all around us. We're being commissioned to go do work. You in your own life are being commissioned and sent out by God with God's power to be a light to the world, to be a saint in God's eyes. So if I could have everybody stand up and do the code one more time with me, and Miss Jody's going to come up and help me. Ready? You can, re you can repeat, or you can do it with me. God's heroes have heart. God's heroes have courage. God's heroes have wisdom. God's heroes have hope. God's heroes have power. So do good. Do good. Let's try that again. So do good. Do good. Seek peace. Seek peace. And go after it. Go after it. Find a seat. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the obedience of your saints you have given us an example of righteousness, and in their eternal joy a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed William Alexander Gary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God.
the name of God, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you be a new creation. Christ to those whom Christ shall send you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.